Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Get Right with Digibyte. My name is Mike. It's another fantastic day on the Digibyte blockchain, and I'm really excited to be joined today by the Economic Ninja. Economic Ninja has a YouTube channel and his own website, theninjanation.org, where he covers the latest updates of uh, geopolitical events and their microeconomic impact. And he's also a huge fan of Digibyte. So, Mr. Ninja, thank you so much for joining us on Get Right with Digibyte. How are you today? Mr. Mr. Ninja? I don't even Mr. know if I've ever been called Mr. Ninja. That's sweet. <laughs> well, thank you so much. My, this is awesome. I'm so stoked. And yes, I'm a huge fan of Digibyte. I've been involved in Digibyte since 2017. Absolutely love it. Love the community. So this is awesome being on. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks so much for joining us. And, uh, you know, yeah, it, it's been great uh, to have you as a part of the community. I think it was probably like around maybe springtime of 2020. Uh, you know, some of your tweets started appearing in my timeline. And, uh, you know, I saw a few typos in there, but I'm like, hey, he's saying some great things about Digibyte. So I'm going to give this guy a follow. And man, you have really blown up. Your YouTube channel uh, is like over 200,000 subs now. Yeah. And so congratulations on that. Thank you. And, uh, you know, I can't help but think, you know, a large part of your success uh, is with, uh, you know, your message really resonates with people because, you know, you're out there, you're sounding the alarm, yeah. you're warning people about, you know, there's tough times ahead. Yeah. But it's not all doom and gloom. It's more yeah. doom and opportunity. If, oh, if you huge. Will. Uh, huge. You know, your, your, your motto is be prepared, not scared. Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask you, what is it, uh, you know, where did that inspiration for that philosophy come from? Well, first, I got to talk about the typos because I do typos all the time. <laughs> and it's true. And especially yeah. in the beginning of Twitter, I'm like, how do I do this thing? And uh, and it's it's being real with people. And that's what I love about Digibyte is because this is a real community of people that are trying to build something great. Um, but the the theme of the channel being prepared and not scared came from when I started becoming an investor in early or late 90s, uh, building up in the dot com stocks, finding success there, getting out before it crashed, but still learning really hard but valuable lessons of licking my wounds after stock losses. Uh, I did the same thing with real estate, got out before the crash, but even after just, the, I had three properties uh, and those almost took me out quite frankly. Um, what I learned, and I didn't know I was a cycles investor back then. I could see a couple key time points where I'm like, okay, it's time to get in or it's time to get out. But what I really learned is you make more money while everything's crashing and burning than you do when everything's going up. Because by the time everything's going up and there's euphoria, that means the sheep and the herd has already moved in. Everyone's excited. You know, you've got your doctors and your dentists and your lawyers buying the craziest investments that everyone's talking about, or you hear it from the shoe shine guy. That's the the, the famous quote from. Uh, uh, the Great Depression, right? Right as the Great Depression was about to come over, even the shoe shine guy, which all he's talking about was the stocks he owns rather than what's going on in the world or, you know, shining shoes, doing what he does. And um, so I found that as collapse happens, there's always opportunities. And that's why it's very important to be diversified and also have a cash position or yuan position or whatever country you're coming from. Uh, I'm sure there's people from all over the world because we're dealing with Digibyte, right? It's a, a world community um, trying to build something great, a PF part of something great. So that's why you have to have dry powder on the side. And to say, to say that right now is an opportunity and so many different things is an understatement. But quite frankly, I believe it's going to become even worse in the next couple of weeks so uh there's a lot of things to talk about yeah uh yeah definitely it, it's you know the markets all across the board are are just in, in you know constant state of tor turmoil it feels like and yeah. uh you know you mentioned that that you were in an in investing you know before the dot-com bubble or, and also the real estate bubble uh during you know right before that you know preceded the great financial crisis of 2008 what, what was it that what was your signal you're like, when you say, okay, it's, it's time to get out because this thing's going to pop. Well, you know, um, Peter Schiff was somebody that I was in fo following in real time, even back in the late 90s. And he was talking about this bubble in tech stocks. I was watching Greenspan talking about irrational exuberance and, and how this stuff's gotten a little out of control. Um, I was following uh, people like, well, the Wolf of Wall Street, which was a bad example, but you know, people that were making tons of money and it was just very in a, in a rational way. But the real signal came is when I got into real estate. I got into real estate because it was coming off of the back end of the dot-com uh, bubble bursting. And you saw literally the Federal Reserve start lowering rates to try and spur growth in the economy and all i could see was an opportunity because i said well as mortgage rates collapse then people are going to get greedy and they're going to want to sell their house and buy a nicer house and it's just going to be this uh this 
machine of people getting greedy and buying, selling and buying, selling and buying, and they're sort of going to build and bid up real estate. So that's when I saw that to getting out on the uh, real estate, I was following Michael Burry and the gentleman from that movie, The Big Short, in real time. When people were mock, and what I'm not even saying mocking because they were not in the news, but um, it, it would pop up every once in a while on CNBC about this group of people that were investing against the MBS uh, market cycle. And they actually literally convinced large banks like uh, Goldman Sachs to write a short position up to where they could actually short the housing market. And so they were getting a little bit of stir, but they weren't really mainstream on CNBC or other financial channels. I was following them with bated breath because I completely agreed with their thesis. I was screaming at Ben Bernanke in 2005 at, on the television saying, I don't think there's a housing bubble. I think you guys are, I mean, I'm paraphrasing a little nuts uh, because, you know, things have never been better. And uh, quite frankly, they weren't better. And so I was selling. So that's the premise of how I saw these cycles starting and ending. Okay. So you were just paying attention to the cycles of the markets and, and just recognizing the, 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 the tops and, and, and when, yeah, when irrational out. exuberance uh, is, is probably the best term that I ever heard from, from uh, Alan Greenspan. When, when something's too good to be true, it usually is right. We talk about that all the time or everyone knows that, but mm -hmm. like what we're seeing right now in the stocks, the Dow Jones, S and P, and right now we're actually seeing them in bear market territory. They're down 20% off their highs. Matter of fact, the S and P is the recording of this just hit its official 20% uh, correction about an hour ago. And uh, those are irrational because they were built up like Amazons and certain tech companies because people flooded into them or Tesla because they had money handed to them by the government. So they went on their apps like Robinhood, which again, massive margin issues, right? Everybody can uh, buy on margin. And so they bid these things up. I mean, for heaven's sakes, we see a, a movie theater company that was pretty much bankrupt go into a short squeeze and people literally believe this is gonna go on forever. So that's irrational exuberance. So those are the kind of things I look at. When people say the phrase, you can't lose or this time is different. I'm like, Oh, time right. we're out. Pull the parachute. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well that, that's great that you've been able to, to time the markets, uh, in such a way. And, and like you said, you, you were following people that, that were in the know or, or could recognize, uh, these signals as well. You mentioned, uh, the guys that were portrayed in the film, the big short, uh, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic film. I highly recommend people watch it. Cause it's, it's, yeah. it's really fascinating to, to see how all these things played out, especially after the fact, you know, we all say hindsight is twenty twenty, but people like, like the guys and like, like you mentioned, Michael Beery and people like yourself, you know, you could kind of see beyond that and say, well, wait a minute, you know, things are going to, things are getting out of control. So it's time, yeah. time to get out. And one thing really quick, of course, uh, you know, neither one of us are financial advisors. We're just two dudes chatting here. Yep. Uh, this is for information and entertainment purposes only. Yeah. Um, but it's it, I, obviously these are important talk uh, topics uh, that need to be discussed because it affects everyone on the whole planet, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and now you, you mentioned Peter Schiff. Uh, I'd like to back up to him uh, for a minute, if we could. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he's someone I followed for many years as well. I've always respected, uh, you know, a lot of his work. Uh, he's been one of the very few, uh, you know, mainstream economists that can go on CNBC and say uh, this is all going to end badly with you know the inflation leading to hyperinflation and so on and so forth um and he's very uh pro gold and pro you know precious metals but he's mm -hmm. very anti-bitcoin and you know he'll come out and he'll put out a tweet saying bitcoin and crypto it's it's worthless it's going to go to zero it's nothing and then of course all the bitcoin and crypto maxis come in they, they meme him to death and yeah. it's fun to watch in some cases but you know i want to get your opinion because you're someone you know you you're out there, you're going to conventions, you're going to meetups, you're hosting meetups, you've built uh, an amazing community, the Ninja Nation. Uh, you know, in your experience, uh, you know, is, is, is that the, the majority where people are either all in gold and silver and, and, and stay away from crypto or vice versa? Or do you see uh, generally, you know, there's a more balanced approach? Well, let's let's dive into Peter. So, uh, first off, I believe that Peter understands that building this rivalry between uh, gold and silver bugs and crypto uh, sells information. Like he's got people. You know, a lot of times bad uh, 
attention can be just as good as good attention, right? From a marketing standpoint, Peter Schiff, uh, Schiff Gold is one of the first outlets to accept Bitcoin for precious metals. I actually, uh, when Bitcoin was $6,000, I bought silver with my Bitcoin. So um, when I first started investing, it was back in 2017, September it was, um, I took my initial investment. I, I remember investing $10,000. By the time I started buying gold with it, it's because it, uh, it went up to a hundred thousand dollars. So I, I took my original investment and I bought silver with it. And I actually use Peter Schiff's service, very seamless, fast. Okay. So first off, Peter Schiff accepts uh gold for Bitcoin. And, and it's right. not that he holds it, okay, but it's a very easy, fluid way of of getting money into that investment vehicle. Okay. Um another thing, and they had an amazing service. Um, another thing that Peter understands is that you know, he may be against Bitcoin or know that it, it's not gold. But he also understands the dynamics of this amazing community that's blowing up. So he's using both sides of the, you know, the coin, for lack of better terms. Um, but but what I think is really interesting is is people like Peter. They say that a broken watch is always, or a broken clock is always right twice, you know, a day. Uh, the truth of the matter is, it there's, goes a little farther than that. Um, Economic cycles happen every seven to 10 years. And then you have um, these massive cycles that happen every 50 to 100 years, right? And right now we're experiencing literally a 100 year cycle. Um, people don't realize how amazing it is. I mean, even back to 2018, when we had the Spanish flu come out leading to a depression, uh, you literally can almost time that and not on the Gregorian calendar, but a different calendar to the month. This is amazing history to me, right? Well, Peter forever was warning about the dot-com buildup. And then he was also warning forever, when I mean forever, a couple of years on CNBC and mainstream media about the, the housing bubble. And they'd say, oh, well, finally, you're right. Of course, you're going to be right because the broken clock theory. That's actually not true because it these cycles are even closer than you think. And so when Peter's warning and, and talking about it, I mean, I was talking with Max Kaiser when he was ex, you know, screaming and jumping up and down about Bitcoin about uh, what, three months ago, four months ago. And I said, yeah, Mac, and this is a side conversation. I'm like, yeah, but Max, you can get all these people excited. It's about to crash. He goes, no, it's going to be, you know, and I'm like, no, but Max, we, we know these cycles between happening cycles and these, what the four year dips, it's about to crash. And he goes, yeah yeah and then you know, he comes off and uh, he goes on stage literally like five minutes later i'm like yeah he's gonna bring up the ninja yeah he of course he didn't because he got a cheerleader he got a cheerleader but he did catch himself because he was cheerleading and getting everyone pumped and then he started to, uh, that's when i thought he was gonna say something about me because he goes but you know again you got to remember it's these pumps aren't always forever and then it comes down and then it comes up and yes just like everything like real estate it does this over time because the destruction of the fiat currency it's priced in and that's what we're experiencing right now now a lot of people would ask well, Ninja, if you know that Bitcoin is going to crash, why didn't you tell us all? Uh, quite frankly, I didn't sell one bit of my crypto. Um, yeah, I've watched my portfolio drop uh, a lot. I know a lot of people that have seen seven-figure losses, multi-seven-figure losses in this is this last dip, um, but they haven't sold. Why? Well, because I've got other things going on. I've got my core positions. Uh, maybe I trade a little bit, but I really don't do that because I don't. I'm not good at trading. But I know the long term, like Max was talking about. I get the long term. Um, but the, sadly, crypto is extremely tied to the stock market because of derivatives and because of banking institutions getting their grubby little hands into it. And, uh, and it's sad. Not a lot of people understand that most of the crypto floating out there, it's not real. It's a derivative. Like you go into Robinhood. Right? As of right now, they're about to change. It's probably people like me putting out videos on them. They're getting 100,000 views saying that stuff's fake. It's not real. It's like right now, if you, I think if you go into Uphold and you buy Digibyte, it's still not real Digibyte. It is a right. derivative. Now, if you want exposure to Digibyte and you can't get it because you're not real tech fancy and you're in America, sure, jump onto Uphold and use it. And I know a lot of people in the community are gasping right now. I can't believe you do that. But what does it do when all of a sudden there's uh, people buying these derivatives? Well, then these uh, exchanges start going, maybe we should really list it. You know, because Uphold and other exchanges, uh, they offer real Bitcoin, real XRP, right? Because you could pull it off the exchange on your 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 hardware wallet. Well, this Digibyte is no different. Um, you know, it's all over the world in exchanges, but in America, it's ironic. Anything that comes out of America, American exchanges don't list it. You know, with XRP, with Theta, with Digibyte, it's really hard. Anything that sort of came out technology blockchain tech that comes out of America, it seems like these American exchanges don't want to list it. So I don't know if that's a conspiracy theory or not, but I know there's a couple, but you know what I mean. Right. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely uh, perplexing to say the yeah. least that 
you know, a lot of these these big exchanges, especially here in the United States, uh, won't list it. Uh, yeah. You know, we of course you know, got Coinbase, uh, you know, Binance US, uh, uh, Kraken or Kraken, yeah. however you say it. Uh, you know, Bittrex, uh, you know, it's an American exchange. They've listed it. You know, I don't know how how they rank in terms of size of, of the others. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just it's mind boggling that they won't list it. And you know, if we can get into you know conspiracies of why. Well, but it, well, let's throw this out there. That's it's sort of it's sort of gangster, and it sounds funny. We're in a world now that uh, people want to go against the norm. All right, that they're pushing against the norm, and this information uh, renaissance that we're going through right now on on the internet. Uh, and the invention of blockchain technology is is blowing people's minds, and that's something that the Digibyte uh, Digibyte community should embrace. And that's what I've talked about on my channel because there's a lot of people that come out and go, "How's your Digibyte doing?" I'm like, "Well, I bought it a while ago, so it's, I'm still doing great." But um, my point being is that, yeah, uh, in uh, being relative to a lot of things, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that. Um, that would have dissed my favorite project. And they say, Oh, you got it. I got this awesome thing called Luna. And I'm like, yeah. And, and I feel for those people. I lost some money in Luna too. I went and took a speculative position. Um, but the thing is, is that that's sort of gangster. I mean, Digibyte has done so many things that have already bucked the trend. I mean, shoot, everybody wants to talk about Dogecoin or they did. And, and a lot of people that are excited about Dogecoin have no idea like, well, Dogecoin almost died, literally was done until they were able to pull part of the uh, code from uh, Digibyte because Digibyte's open source. They're like, hey, we're all about making the world better. And once people get into Digibyte, it's it's not about price. It's about, and that's why I tell people, don't put everything into one basket, but be a part of something that's bigger than that, the movement, you know, you know, how, how is it that you can mess with IP addresses and, you know, mass certain things and, you know, things that we didn't, we wanted to talk about a long time ago, but then when the government started coming after, you know, Monero and stuff and all that sort of went quiet. But my point being is there is a lot of tech built into that uh, Digibyte blockchain that a lot of people don't know about. And um, and I think it's going to blow some people's minds. And when it starts to move like the last three cycles, holy cow, it goes fast. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And and yeah, and it, it's funny, too, because, you know, uh, a lot of this uh, industry is it's driven by hype, you know, especially yeah. when people, when they're, when they're new to the space and they come in and they, they hear about something like Luna and they're like, oh yeah, 20%. Yeah. That sounds great. Let me park my coins over here and get that 20%. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, once they kind of dive into the tech a little deeper, as you mentioned, then they discover, oh, well, you know, what, what makes, what sets these, these chains apart. And you look at something like Digibyte for one, it's, it's its own native chain for oh, one, yeah. which I think is a huge, uh, uh, advantage uh, uh, over, you know, a lot of tokens, for example, that yeah. require other, you know, they're, they're relying on Ethereum or, yep. or some of these others. Um, and uh, of course, you can talk about the speed, the, the security, the multi uh mining, uh, the difficulty adjustment, which is what, as you mentioned, what saved Doge, uh, of course, yep. it's all open source. So all these, you know, and I think there's probably like about two dozen other chains in, uh, that are using yeah. this, this technology. And, um, and so, yeah, it's something that, that really sets Digibyte apart. Now, in addition to that, and you touched on this before, uh, you know, it's the people behind it, the community. It's, it's yeah. very organic. It's just kind of just genuine, authentic people uh, who, who it's not just, hey, I want to pump my bags. It's no, I really do want to, you know, make the world a better place. Yep. Um, and I know uh, a couple of weeks ago, you had uh, a couple of members from the Digibyte community on your channel. Mm -hmm. um, I got to get his name right. It's bad uncle time traveler, Jonathan and <laughs> yeah. uh, crypto charts, Joe. Oh yeah. Uh, uh, who are very active on Twitter. I follow both of them and they're very yeah. engaging. And it, it was a great conversation you guys had. Cause you talked a lot about, you know, the community, but also, uh, you know, they did a lot of uh, charting, um, which was really interesting. Cause I, I'm not a trader. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I've done a little in the past and realized I was really bad at it. So I said, okay, I'm just going to, but I'm going to go with the buy and hold model uh, instead. But it's it's great, you know. I, I, like I said, I uh, Jonathan's tweets, uh, you know, they're really engaging and uh, and and hilarious a lot of times. Yeah, there. Yeah. And, uh, well, let me let me dive into that real quick because, um, sure. you know, they understand something that I understand, and I, I I'm sure you do too. Is that once they once they the people figure it out, 
it's it's over it they'll be diving in right mm -hmm. once they yeah you could talk speed and all that kind of stuff the multi-algo is interesting because what i want people to know is you know there's a lot of uh, blockchains out there that were built to be mined uh with a specific piece of hardware everything about digibyte is about community and fairness and even that in the uh multi-algo mining and being able to use any piece of hardware whether it be asic um uh, GP, GPU, or uh, it, it, they cover everything, right? They're working on, uh, they want to make it fair to anyone can mine, right? Even CPU. Right. I think that's complete now, isn't it? CPU mining? Or it's getting close. Yeah, I think it's it's something it's that is still in the works. Yeah, they're uh, working on it. But that's yeah. my point is that they go, look, we want this for me for right. everybody. Okay. So yeah. um, I was talking with, I don't know if you know who Dick Algeyer is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Back in like 2018. No, 2019, a Litecoin conference. I'm talking with him. We're just chatting. And everybody wanted to get his picks and all that kind of stuff. And as everyone turned away, I go, hey, Dick. And I go, tell me, did you bite isn't going to be the one? And his eyes, he just got big. And he literally he just looks at me and he goes, that's the one. Like, and, and it's funny because yeah. it's not just like a social media influencer, right? That, that is really into this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's people that are in blockchain tech uh, coders and stuff. I always say, well, what do you guys think about Digibyte? Oh, I own Digibyte. I like Digibyte. I like the project. And, yeah. and it's just, and people, they have no, most people have no idea that Digibyte was pretty much first with NFTs. Um, they, their smart contract capability runs about 70% of the functionality of an Ethereum car, smart contract. And uh, the speed, yeah, it, it's just incredible. But it is literally where Bitcoin was in 2011, 2010. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have, it is totally underground, people out there coding, banging away on keys, people at their home mining and supporting the network. I mean, it's the longest UXTO still blockchain on earth. Uh, right. It is amazing. You don't need Lightning Network to make it fast. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, I don't, I didn't essentially think about Lightning Network as a crutch. I know there's a lot of people are going to get angry and sure you can get upset, You're like whatever. I'm involved in something that nobody barely understands. Cool. I understand where money uh, and value is and all mm -hmm. I've got to wait for is enough people to wake up and go, that's awesome. And so that's why I'm a part of this community. And also I'll just add when the crash happened in 2018 and, uh, you know, Bitcoin went from 19 grand and changed down. So eventually it ended up like in the 2000 range. Everybody was whining, screaming, crying and stuff like that. Nobody in the Digibyte community was complaining. Everyone was like, all right, what are we building next? What are we doing? What are we adding? Like, and it was incredible. And yeah, the community is small, but it is powerful. So that's, that's, that's all I got to say about that, I guess. Yeah, no, I, I agree totally. Yeah. Cause that, you know, 2018, that's when, when I first got involved, uh, you know, with the Digibyte community uh, on a marketing level, you know, I'd been mm -hmm. in crypto about a year and, um, you know, I realized, you know, like when I first got in, it was like, Hey, I just want to make some money on this. But then as I learned more about the technology, I'm like, Oh, wow, this is really, really, you know, groundbreaking stuff and yeah. and i was hooked and i was but but how do i i don't get more involved and and yeah. it, it just you know the light bulb went off i'm like oh well digibyte is a permissionless network yep okay i can just go out you know go out and make a youtube video today uh, or anyone can and talk about digibyte and uh, you know you have the freedom to do that uh yep and so you know like you said you know anyone can mine it anyone can use it anyone can create nfts on it Yep. And, uh, you know, it's one of the, the many uh, facets that, that make it such an exceptional uh, protocol. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and going back to, uh, you know, your chat with with Jonathan and, and Joe a couple of weeks ago, I know this was like a few days before the whole Luna meltdown. Yeah. And that's something you can't really chart for. Nope. Right. Uh, it, like, would, would you consider is that considered a, a black swan event? Oh, or just totally. Something? OK. Totally. So, and yeah, there, I'm sure there were market participants involved, um, you know, and, and that's the sad thing is we're coming into a digital age where the digital dollar is about to be rolled out and uh, digital currencies all around the world are being rolled out has nothing to do with blockchain. It's not decentralized. It's a scary, sad uh, form of slavery, to be honest with you, uh, financial slavery. And uh, it just fits that uh, a stable coin would lose its peg and then watching what's going on with Tether. And so the timing I believe was pretty perfect for certain groups to be able to run with this. Um, but yeah, that, that's something you couldn't have charted for, but honestly, yeah. it's also on the backs of the NASDAQ coming down significantly. And we still have more pain. I believe to over the next two weeks, we have a lot more pain in both the, the stock market and the crypto market. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. 
unfortunately i think it's uh we've got a long way to go um yeah but it's you know like you said you know there, there's opportunities in in situations like this and uh as like i said if you can be prepared for it you know both you know physically and 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 mentally and, and as well as spiritually then yeah. not only can you survive this uh you know this event but you can thrive and and really totally. you know be be successful uh as we move into the the new paradigm um you know and, and you mentioned i was going to ask you you know what your opinion is on on the cbd CDs or the you know central bank digital currencies uh you just touched on that but yeah. what is your prediction when do you think they'll the fed will roll this out here in the united we states we already know we already know actually sadly it's called uh was it fednow.org or .com or .gov i don't remember i did a web a video about it where i went on their site and it showed that they're rolling it out in the first part of the year in 2023 now, in 2010, okay. I was reading documents coming out of the Federal Reserve about the invention of a digital currency, and uh, the thought process behind it was that uh, it can only be rolled out during a time of crisis. Uh, they had to wait for a time of crisis, like literally use the word wait, because the public will not like it. They will know what it is. Now, we've already seen the time of crisis, which was 2020, and the narrative was, we're getting you money as fast as you can, but you, there's so many of you, and we just can't get it to you fast enough. Oh, that's weird. What else will fix that? You know, and we see all these stories of like, we couldn't get the money to the right people in time and all this stuff. Well, that's not true. Everybody that that uh, qualified for a stimulus check got the stimulus check, but they built the narrative. And the way they're going to do this one is going to be very interesting because they're going to literally, it'll be a panic. Everything's, you know, riots in the street, food shortages, uh, markets melting down this, uh, I believe it starts at the end of this fall. And they're going to say, hey, we've got this thing. You could already download part of it, I think, uh, to your phone. Just go to the App Store. You're going to answer full name, first name, last name, Social Security, blah, blah, blah. And instantaneously, like I, I think it's going to be as high as 10000 uh, personally. Dollars are going to be in your, your wallet. And um, there's some, some people that are running around with a, a skewed sense of reality in this rollout. Um, and you're going to be able to spend it, but you're going to have like a couple weeks. And if you don't spend it, it's uh, going to be taken away. And the reason why it's, it's almost like you're doing a service to your country, just like with the stimulus checks. If you don't spend it, that doesn't go to the restaurant tour or the clothing store or the gas station, and you can't help the economy. So do it for the greater good, right? We've seen this before, like buy war bonds and together we're going to be great. We're going to come together. And really it's the government, like we're going to rip you off. Um, <laughs> and so we're just going to destroy it. You know, your, your savings to inflation, pay you a crappy rate. Um, so we've seen this before and people buy it. Um, and what people say, like, well, you'll never, they'll never let you buy crypto or gold and silver with your Fed coin. I'm like, no, they're going to. No, they'd never do that. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. If they didn't, they said, okay, you can, you can use this, but you can't buy a gold, silver, and Bitcoin. What would the public do? They'd go, why not? Well, because, yeah. because you'd know that our stuff's crap. <laughs> and and it, so they're not going to say that because why they know that only like one tenth of one percent of Americans own any precious metals. And they also know that less than I think one percent of uh, Americans own real cryptocurrency. I'm talking about not XRP on on uh, uh, Coinbase or not Digibyte on Uphold. I'm not dissing Uphold, right? I have an Uphold link because they do a lot of things great. And um, uh, but it's like real crypto that they can't seize. Very few people own that stuff. So why would they sit there and tell the other 99%, all right, guys, don't buy this stuff with our digital coin. They're not going to do that. So what I'm trying to get people prepared, like you say, being prepared, not scared. Uh, one thing is being out of debt and being in a position with a clear mind. I got some food in my belly because I stored a little food aside. When This crap is going to get crazy pretty soon and go, oh, hey, I got 10,000 bucks. What am I going to do? Oh, I'll buy a little Bitcoin, a little silver. You know, oh, I'll pay that little debt off or you know what I mean? And just act, go into action because... And I'm not joking. It'll happen so fast. Um, when the stimulus checks came out, the inflation wave didn't like, you know, Robinhood stocks, AMC, all these things didn't happen for like a month. When this happens, it's going to be like a one day event. You're going to literally, it's going to be whoever's first with their, their digital dollars to almost anything online. And you're going to see prices skyrocket. That's my mm. opinion now. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's, it's going to be fascinating to watch know how they roll it out and how it gets yeah. used and uh i mean do you think it'll be successful or for how long yes 100 percent yeah. successful yeah and the reason why is um because it's gonna fire so much dopamine off in your system you're gonna get such a high i mean very similar to the stimulus checks i mean how many people just ran out and bought a big screen tv 
uh, because like, it's free money. I mean, we saw literally Louis Vuitton stores like wrapped around the corner with women that just like, I got five grand and I'm finally going to be able to buy the one thing. Why? That I can never afford. That I could never afford, but I'm going to buy it today. Why? Because I was just handed money. And last month I was able to pay my bills the month before that, but they didn't realize they didn't think about the couple months ahead. That, oh, you may lose your job. You right. know, so I think it will be wildly successful. And then sadly, they're going to outlaw cash. Wow. Well, hopefully, you know, it doesn't get to that. Uh, you know, because yeah. I, I, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I love metals and I love crypto, but I still love mm -hmm. cash too, just because it's easy and it's anonymous. Yes. And, uh, you know, the banks don't get a cut of every transaction. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the same time, it's, uh, you know, like you said, it, it's, it's going to, they're going to create this crisis. And as you know, the, the yeah. saying goes, you'll never let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. And now it's gone to the point where, uh, you know, in my opinion, they're, they're creating these crises just so they can step in and say, Oh, well, we're going to be the savior with our wonderful idea. Yep. Uh, you know, accept it or continue to suffer. Yeah. Um, you know, you see that with you know, the, the, the formula now, uh, the, mm -hmm. for, for babies, you know, uh, or, or with, you know, diesel shortages. I mean, the things are, I'm sure, you know, you've oh, covered these price I mean, controls. Like, this is yeah. insane. Yeah. You, yeah. Just, you did a video about this yesterday about the, the U S house of representatives just passed a bill uh, allowing the, the president under an energy emergency. I mean, uh, uh, they can, uh, install price controls. Yeah. Which means and, certain companies are just going to close their doors. Like, all right, yeah. we can't make money. See ya. And then what happens then? To the ones that are left that causes the price to explode or you have severe shortages so yeah, let me ask you this uh, i don't know are we talking about dandelion these days uh, uh i think it's still sitting on the core wallet right that dandelion protocol i don't know if it's no in the level? core wallet it was in the mobile wallets and i know That's there what was I the, the mobile wallet yeah, which, yeah and yeah. there was i think there was like a coding issue that and this is one of the things i think yoshi uh is is working on it and for one of the the, the latest updates uh to yeah. kind of fix that um yep. but but yeah i mean that, that's an awesome feature won't you yeah so you tell us more about that? um very interesting and i'm not real techie yoshi's gonna be laughing his butt off right now and yoshi you need to get on my channel he's like i know i'm getting ready i've got a lot going on i'm like yoshi get on my channel we could talk about this a little more tech level um dandelion essentially was invented or created and it was part of the mobile uh wallet which i believe still is uh, uh part of the bitcoin core uh protocol for lack of better terms. And you, when you go to send a transaction, you could set, set this button, uh, toggle it on. And when it sends it essentially for lack of better terms, for just keeping it real vanilla, it jumbles a bunch of IP addresses around, let's say, and it becomes not traceable or very a little different. You know, we're trying to pick our words, right. Um, yeah. and it's one of those amazing features that was really exciting in 2017. But as you know, crypto was blowing up, you saw these stories about, you know, trackability and, and, and uh, this essentially an attack on privacy coins. I think the community just went, ah, let's just mail her out. But I, I bring it up to give it an example, regardless if it's running or not because of updates, right. And, and just some fixes to the code that needs to happen, which are really not big issues. It's the point is that you have great, amazing, uh, coders, people that are in tech that are thinking ahead of like, how do we make this better? How do we make it faster? How do we make it, let's say a little quieter? little more mellow. And uh, that is why, you know, everybody I know that's been in crypto for so long is has some digibyte. They're like, I like it. I really like it, you know, but everybody understands. They go, yeah, but see, Bitcoin's only Bitcoin now because a handful of banks got involved back in like 2012, 13 and started like, all right, we're going to start funding some of these coders, right? Digibyte doesn't have that. Right. The only, and I already know of a hedge fund manager that really wanted to buy up $50 million worth of uh, Digibyte a little while back. And he still to this day loves Digibyte. Like he goes, man, he goes, it's just so hard to get a hold of people. I'm like, well, it's decentralization, man. And I'm all, but if you think about it, you just get him and 10 other guys his size in a room, you know, these billionaires and go, well, what does it take? Well, it takes a little bit of funding. It takes like what uh, you work with, what Digicorp Labs, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. already ha so it's already starting right now. So right. You're literally in the infancy with a Digibyte where companies have come together now and formed to go, we're going to literally fund through crowd funding or, or selling shares or I'm not getting into what Digicorp Labs is doing, but, um, but they're going, we're going to take money and we're going to pay for certain things to get done to make this not only better, but the marketing, you know what I mean? So, and I'm not saying Digicorp Labs is marketing, but you're literally seeing Digibyte is where I believe 
Bitcoin was in 2009, 2011, that area. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think it's it's still kind of in that, that infancy stage where people are yeah. just still kind of figuring it out, learning more about it, and they're discovering it. Um, but it's still under the radar because it doesn't have that the, the massive backing that Bitcoin uh, has or received, you know, uh, back in, uh, you mentioned 2012. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's interesting too, because I remember, I think it was um, shortly after Digicorp Labs, you know, announced that, you know, they were doing what they're doing and they hosted a spaces with Yoshi. And the question was brought up to him like, hey, will your work with Digicorp Labs take away from your work as a core developer uh, for Digibyte? And he responded, no, it's actually going to uh give me more time to uh commit to digibyte because now you know you're kind of you know it it just provides the the environment the situation where he can focus uh yep. on working with on on digibyte code and not have to worry about like oh well you know we, we've all got bills to pay we got to put food on the yep. table and you know again being an open source permissionless network you know we're all volunteers uh yep. uh in many cases i mean there are you know uh you know, sometimes there's bounties for developers uh, for different projects or bug fixes, things like that. Uh, but for the most part, you know, you're just you're doing it uh, for the love of the work or for totally. the love of the, the community. What, what have you yep. know, we, we all have our own reasons. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it's really great to see that, you know, a lot of these, uh, you know, these coders, these developers are now getting the, the backing from actual businesses. You know, of course, there's Digi Asset X. Uh, uh, which is uh, you know, recently launched and, and is really taking off with uh, yeah. uh, the NFT space within Digibyte uh, and with smart contracts. And so, yeah, I mean, it's it's great to see and it's great to be a part of it. And yeah. uh, and I, I think, yeah, like you said, it's really going to blow up here uh, here pretty soon because, yeah. like I said, things are, are really getting bananas out there uh, in the world. Um, yeah. So uh, I know we're, we're we've got uh, just a couple minutes left. So, yeah. but I, I do want to ask you. So if for me personally, like, you know, I kind of came to the realization of the horrors of fractional reserve banking like 10 years ago, and yeah. I've been kind of prepping and preparing ever since. And I'm still yeah. kind of anxious with everything that's going on. I can't oh, yeah. imagine what someone's going through who, you know, let's say they woke up this morning like, oh, my God. Or, you know, oh. it, it, what, what, what should someone do first if they're just starting to get prepared? Yeah, recommend? that's an exciting time because there are people that have that light switch. Everybody has a light switch day, right? Mm -hmm. and, and there was not one person in crypto that the day before they went, I'm in, went, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like like every you either love it or hate it, right? Everything that happens. And uh, right now with the economy as it is, I run into a lot of these people because the channel, they're like, oh, my gosh, I literally found your channel like a month and a half ago. Had no clue what was going on about, you know, monetary policy and how the Fed can create or destroy money, all this stuff. And so they always ask me, what can I do? And I said, all right, well, this is the first thing. You got to list out all of your assets and your liabilities. You're, it, mm. I want to know what kind of debt you're in. You got to look at your debt. And then you got to put next to it a debt like what's the, the term? How long is it for? And what's my interest rate? If you don't know by just writing down all of your bills and how much you pay per month and how much interest, what to do at first, then you might need some help, like really help. But um, because there's people that go, well, should I go buy some Bitcoin or should I buy some silver? And I'm like, well, do you got any credit card debt? And they go, yeah. And I'm like, how much? Oh, about 12 grand. And I'm, I'm like, well, you're, you're paying an insane amount of interest on that. Do you pay principal and interest? No, I'm just paying the, the, the interest. I'm like, you're dying. You're already making poor decisions. So let's take part. Let's take, get rid of one of those poor decisions. Let's get that credit card debt paid off. People don't want to hear that. So I said, yeah. you know what's going to happen? If you can't handle that, if you can't pay off that credit card debt first. Now, right now we're about to hit a famine. I say, honestly, go get yourself a month's worth of emergency food, like canned goods and store it in the corner of your closet. That's number one. But if you can't get that credit card debt and all you're wanting to do is buy crypto because you think it's going to moon tomorrow or gold and silver because you think it's going to moon. You're always going to lose. You're going to have a loser's mentality. You're a, um, you're not an investor. You're a speculator. You will always lose. So fight your, fix the bad decisions of the past today. Get that credit card debt paid off, and then start to take the money you were spending on your monthly payments on credit card debt, and then start to figure it out. Okay, well, do I have any more debt to pay off? Maybe I'll split it up, you know, a little bit. But credit card debt is a noose around your neck. So that's what I tell people immediately. You need to start doing. Yeah, uh, that's 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 great advice. Uh, I agree. Um, yeah, because you know people ask me like, well, what crypto should I get into? And of course, I'm my first answer is like, well, Digibyte. But I'm like, well, yeah, 
how are you doing in everything else? Like, uh, you know, food storage, like, you know, stack seeds before sats, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and get ready because, you know, even if, you know, Bitcoin goes to a million dollars or Digibyte goes to $10, you know, if the world is in a situation where there's no goods to buy with that new value of, of money or the new money you've acquired, then. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, what, you know, you gotta, gotta feed yourself first. And, and like you said, yeah. we're, due to the nature of, of, of the world and, and, and where it's going with all the, the supply chain and shortages, uh, you know, that could be a, a real, a real thing. And, and it is in many parts of the world. I mean, I just saw videos, I think it's Sri Lanka or, or Singapore. No. Um, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, people yeah, are literally Sri in the Lanka, streets. Yeah. Yeah. And they have and, a horrible and, crisis going on, but it's actually not just them. We have countries all over, you know, Turkey was in the news right around what November, December, Turkey is still in a crisis. Venezuela is still in a crisis. And Venezuela, oh, yeah. you know, and Turkey have been in crisis for like well over a year, if not like three, four years. Uh, Sri Lanka is just the most recent. I mean, we're seeing Iran having protests right now. And it's because of food costs. It's because of inflation. And so um, we're going to see that in America. And I believe we're going to see it in America by end of September. We're going to see people in the streets because of the cost of gasoline, which I believe will hit over $10. Um, and we are going to see food shortages like you wouldn't believe. And it's way more than baby formula. And it's, and, and I mean, produce places are meat packing facilities are being just literally burnt to the ground. This is very serious. It's not a joke. I did a yeah. video on this, like what the 20 places that burnt down since November FBI comes out with a story uh, or narrative about three days after my videos I've got like a hundred thousand views. And I said, yeah, there's, it looks like there's some cyber attacks causing these fires. Well, coming from a guy that's been to a lot of structure fires in my life, I don't know about a lot of cyber attacks or just light places on fire. And people like texted me when I said that, like, oh, no, but you could turn the boiler on at this point and that. And I'm like, yeah, I saw that on Bruce Willis's latest movie, too. And I said, <laughs> trust me, there's more going on here. It's like, wake up, guys. This is really what's happening. So, yeah, yeah, totally. And and yeah, uh, maybe a lot of people don't know you. You're a former firefighter. Is that correct? I still am. Yeah, you're still, I still, still am. A OK. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've been a firefighter for 25 years. I'm getting close. Awesome. Um, I'm sure some of my guys will go, Hey, Ninja, you gotta go like, come on, <laughs> you belong. And I don't know if the camera loves me, but he's all, <laughs> you're moving a little slow around the fire grounds, but, uh, <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, I, I have been firefighter for like 25 years and, um, I don't actually talk about it very much at all, but, uh, I had to, a couple of times I was helping like a firefighter organization to start, you know, firefighters and nurses and stuff, start side hustles because people need yeah. extra money. So I, I came out and said that, uh, but yeah, my latest, uh, video, uh, about a big fire in orange County and I've fought fire literally on that block. And I, oh. uh, right as it was breaking, I literally said, they're not going to evacuate. This is going to get dangerous real quick. And I did a video on it and, uh, I, my monetization was taken off. I go, oh, you can't do that. And I'm like, Wait a minute, I can't, I can't like just use a news article and actually from it, I, that I am an expert in. I am a subject matter expert and like, oh no, that doesn't work here. I'm like, oh, okay. Wow, <laughs> so, interesting. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, I just wanted to, to throw that out there because uh, oh. I know you, you mentioned you're like, oh, well, I've been around, you know, many structural fires and yeah. And, uh, that, that yeah, no, it's no so. problem at all. Yeah, I'm not embarrassed. That's it's it. the best job in the world, to be honest with yeah, you. Yeah, well, I, I bet. I mean, that's yeah. what, what else... Uh, I mean, I'd love to, to, to ride a fire truck and, uh, you know, put out fires and it's cool. Uh, it really is. Yeah. Well, listen, I know we're, uh, running a little bit over, so, uh, yeah. you know, I know you're a super busy guy. Um, before I let you go, do you have any, uh, closing thoughts, any closing remarks you want to share with our audience? Yeah. Uh, first off, if you get involved in Digibyte, I think it is amazing. Um, don't go crazy. Honestly, just a, a little bit will do you. And it's because you, you always want to jump in a little bit at a time and get to know the community, get to know the tech. Like, go follow anyone on that likes Digibyte on Twitter, and you'll see real quick, totally different type of community. Um, but get to know, I believe Digibyte is a financial revolution. I believe literally this it's about community and about changing the world rather than going and getting rich. So I just tell people, I'm like, you want to go get rich, go get onto a crypto that's got, you know, some big bank bank backing and a bunch of fancy advertisements. You could usually tell who those guys are. If you want to go make a buck, the problem is because you're usually chasing a buck, you probably won't even know when to sell because greed takes over. If you want to change the world and you want freedom in finance, take a look at Digibyte, buy a couple. And I mean, no joke, a little bit. And get your feet wet and understand what true decentralization is. Yeah, well, that's great. Uh, but well, yeah, we're going to put all your links below so people can uh, 
uh, you know, go go to your YouTube channel and subscribe and, and you. follow you on Twitter. Uh, check out uh, your website, ninjanation.org. And uh, yeah, guys, um, you know, the ninja, he knows his stuff. And uh, thank you uh, so much for joining us on Get Right with Digibyte. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to, to talk to you and to have you on our show. Uh, please, I hope you uh, come back. Uh, the door is always open. Uh, let us know. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll have you back on again. Thanks. Man. And, um, and all the best. Have a great day, a great weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Right on. We'll talk to you later, guys.